What's going on everyone? Welcome to another bow build video. Again, we're building a V3X, but this time instead of the 29, we're building its big brother, the 33. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna be excited about this bow. I'm pretty interested about it myself. The 33, it's big. Like it's, it's big, there's no doubt. Like a 29 inch bow, 27, is very small, uh, good for like 28, 29 inch draws. But this bow is excellent for, if one, you're looking for just a bigger bow, more stable platform, maybe you hunt out west a lot, or your bigger fellas that need a little longer draw like the bigger bow. Um, so this, this bow is exciting. I'm very excited to get it uh, tried out. And this is, this is like, the, I think the biggest axle axle bow that Matthews has had as like their main flagship. They always come out with two, but typically it's like the 27 and the 31, the 28 and 31 and a half, but we have 29 and 33. So kind of interesting, kind of a little bit of a curveball, um, but I'm, I'm pretty jacked to get this thing set up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set this bow up. I, if you want a detailed version of the bow setup, probably watch the, the V3X29 bow build. This one we're gonna throw it together and we're gonna focus a little bit more on like the shooting and what it feels like, uh, maybe even compared to the to the 29 a little bit. So we're gonna get this guy set up. Um, I guess this is new. Um, bridge lock technology, this is new that they like send it with this little screw. You gotta make sure you don't lose that. If you're getting a new bow, you wanna make sure you take that little guy out of there because you'll need that to put your sight on. Um, so accessory wise, I'll go over this real quick. We're rocking the Shrewd Vantage Bureau Bars. We have a QAD Integrate Drop Away Rest. We have an adjustable V-Bar Matthews Genuine made by Shrewd. We have an eight degree down quick dis disconnect Matthews Genuine made by Shrewd. And changing up a little bit, this is a fat or a fast eddy spot hog uh, with Ultra UV3 on it. We're gonna show you how this integrates into the bridge lock technology. Uh, and then the arrow I'm gonna be using is the same arrow I use for my 29 bow build, uh, VAP TKO uh, 450 grains. So a good all around in between arrow. So let's go ahead, get this bad boy bolted on with all the goodies, get it tuned, see how it shoots. We got the bow in the press. Nothing crazy, we just bolted everything on. Um, but now we're gonna set up the rest, put a peep sight in. Um, we will get a rough estimate. We'll put the D-loop on, get the get the arrow square and everything, and then we'll, we'll shoot this guy through the paper, get a rough paper hole, um, get it at least good enough to shoot. What I do to set up my QAD, it's super simple. I love this system. Um, you put it in, no knots, no nothing, and then you pull it back, let it down, and now your cord is at the perfect length to be fully extended at full draw. And all I do is you got your cord in there, I'll simply just tie a knot. Just like that, it's not going anywhere. And then I'll take my knife, wherever it is, this thing's been all over the place. And I'll cut it and burn it just like a D-loop so that it just stays nice and snug right there. It's nothing crazy, I'm not serving anything, um, but it works really well. Perfect. Just like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab an arrow. Let's cut my strings real quick. Grab an arrow. We have all of our leveling devices real quick. And we're gonna get the bow 100% level. 
We're gonna get the bow 100% level here. Oh, actually, let's put some mole skin on real quick before we get the bow left. Now, right, we got mole skin on the bow. Super important, make sure you do that. It could cause some problems. We are going to, I'm just gonna use this guy this time. We're gonna get the bow level. Okay, bow's level. Take our arrow clamp. I don't even know who makes these, but if you if you want to get some of these, I think you can just get them on Lancaster. And then we're gonna make sure our rest is is bumped up. And now we're just gonna get our arrow level, because our QED rest is is zeroed out. It's on all of the zeros, which should technically be straight through this burger hole. This uh, rest bolt all right right there we're going to double check the bow make sure dang it move we're good so now without bumping the arrow we're going to spin this and then we're going to do three knots three on top three on the bottom above and below the knock with about a servings thickness in between the knot to give it some slop because you need some slop on your knock. Too bad that didn't rhyme. So there we go, there's that guy. Top one is done. Put that over there for a second. And you just cut them and you sharpen them. Just cut them and burn them. Just like that. So now we're going to take our D loop material, cut us off some. over and under like that. We're gonna fray one end. Let it cool down for a second. Just hand tighten it since you got this long tag end. So you do the knot facing you towards the face of the bow when it's in this position. And then you do the top side opposite way, the little burned end facing away. And that allows you, when you twist your hand with a handheld release, really doesn't matter too much if you have a trigger, um, but a handheld release helps with a little bit of torque issues you potentially could have. Forgot a step. I'm supposed to put my peeps up in first. Gosh dang. Where's that? At? You guys are probably thinking this whole time. Wait, wait, wait. Put your peep side in. It's really not that big of a deal. It just my D loop might twist a little bit. It will twist. So this little blue indicator down here is true center. I'm just gonna use, I don't even know what type of peep this is. I had it laying around, but it's the right size. I'm gonna go ahead and try it. We'll do a rough estimate. Yeah, that's about right. But it is going to be a little lower since this is a big old, bigger axle axle bow. So we're going to slip it down a little bit. Okay, we have D loop. Let's go ahead and cinch that down some more. <laughs> I'm just dropping everything today. <laughs> I don't know what I seriously. I don't know what it is that I've been dropping literally everything. Okay, so we have this. We're gonna scooch this. I always just keep this blue thing in so you know your true center. Nice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our actual correct peep sight height. We're not gonna tie this in yet. We're just gonna draw back, look on target, look through the scope, see how it feels. And you, you, will, you will need to fine tune that 
I think it, at least for me, as time goes on, I feel like I'm always changing, changing something and pea party sometimes is something I change, especially on a new bow. Um, let's see how this feels, I don't know. Um, draw length is 28 and a half, 75 pounds for some reference. It's a big bow. Feels good though. Oh. It's actually quite money. A good way to tell if your peep height is correct or not. So you draw back with your eyes closed. And you anchor. And then you open them. Yeah, mine, it was pretty close. It could have been a touch higher, but I'm guessing my sights. Let me get up a little bit. I'm guessing my sight's right around 20 yards, and you always want your your sight to be your middle yardage, whatever you're shooting. So if you're shooting 20 to 80 yards, your peep sight should be comfortable at 40, 45 yards. So we're gonna run with that. Um, we're gonna tie this in real quick and try to get a bowl hole out of this thing. Okay, we got our peep sight tied in. Um, we got a brand new sheet of paper up. Which, hopefully we don't have to shoot it as much as the 27. We had to chase it around just for a second. Or the 29. Pretty dang good. It is a little low left. We're going to take a step back. Dang. I don't know. That might be, uh, it's a little right there. It could be a touch right there. But shoo. I don't know, would you, I don't know, would you touch that? <laughs> I wouldn't. No, I don't think so. Wow. So this happens probably once every 10 bows. One just literally put it, like look at this. Zero left and right. Zero up and down. Did you get that left and right? Like actually, no, that's just a little bit of a luck deal. But it goes to show if you if you set it up right, you literally shouldn't have to touch the rest. So there we go. That is the beast. It's a long bow, for sure, but it feels nice compared to. Let me grab. You can do this kind of. We'll do this, take this off, just give you a comparison. We have, wow, yeah, that's quite a bit different. We have the 29 and 33. Holding them. Yeah, like this, this is, this is substantially heavier. I don't know what the, we can look at the specs on it, but I don't know. They feel, let me do a little side-by-side -side comparison here. Shoot this one. This is my actual hunting rig, not the one I just set up. That feels good. Now we got the 33. Hmm. Let me do that again. Let me grab two arrows. This is this is actually like my first impression on shooting this bow. I haven't shot this bow yet. I've shot the 29 a lot. But this bow, I have not. So let's do this again. Let's shoot this guy. I just want to feel vibrations. Like what's all different about it? Okay. 
Draw is nearly the same. Gosh. I want to say that this one holds a bit better, which makes sense because it's a little heavier, longer riser. String angle, I, I really like the string angle on that. Just a, a longer bow in general. Like it feels, you know what it feels like is my 34, which is very, it makes sense because it's only an inch off an axle axle. And really with the cams, the way the cams are oversized like this, it's really, it's almost a bigger bow than the 34, which taking the 34 hunting, I really like that. Let's actually do this real quick. Let me shoot this. Yeah, I mean, that feels anchor wise and holding wise. This one's more aggressive for sure. After shooting that. I don't know if you have like, this is a very long riser shooting bow and long riser shooting bow is is like what you shoot for like a TRX 34, 38, you shoot for target archery. So it's very similar to a target rig. Like I could see, I could see someone getting this bow and shooting it for hunting and rigging it out for target also, or just a bigger guy. Or if you like shooting a longer axle axle bow, but we're gonna we're gonna take this guy. We're gonna go fling a couple of arrows with it. See how it actually does. See how it performs because it's always different to shoot inside and shooting it outside. Clean <laughs> miss, Every eh? time, dude. <laughs> I thought I shot this in the shop. Contact. Okay. Nice. Actually, let's run inside and shoot this crown off the book. 286? No, that ain't bad. Wow. So, same arrow setup. Like 400 and. What was it? 40? Did you ever get 66. a. 66. 66. 466. So, that ain't a bad arrow. Um, four feet per second difference between the axle axles. So, still wicked fast bow. Uh, this is. This is a new day on the bow build. It was raining um, and nasty when we built these bows, but this is my first impressions, impressions in shooting of the 33. I've shot the 29 for a long time, but this is my first impressions on this. So we just got sighted in. I'm gonna shoot a little bit more. See, tell you guys how I like it. Um, and then we'll shoot the 29 and the 33 side by side a little bit and talk about the differences. Okay, so this bow, as you guys already know, it's a V3X33. I wanted to get one of these because I'm very excited about the longer axle axle. It has a very uh, target bow feel to it right off the gate, obviously because of the size, but because of how long the riser is, and that's Matthew's deal is like, they have these really big risers to help with stability and vibration because the bigger the riser you have, the more uh, dissipation that the vibration has and can allow it big terms I know <laughs> be proud English teacher um, I really like this feel and as you guys know I do like a little bit bigger bow at times I set up the TRX 34 um, it does not really feel like the TRX 34 what I think it feels like the most is the uh, oh gosh traverse so if you like the traverse you're really gonna like this um, so it has a very similar feel Holds really nice. Um, four, it goes. 
for my um, draw length and everything, it is a little big. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's it's a bigger bow, 28 and a half inch draw, but it, it's, it feels really nice. If it is, it, this bow would be like a perfect fit if you wanted to dabble with uh, 3D or some target along with hunting. It's kind of like, you could almost set it up like as a hybrid bow, just because of the longness, or how long it is. And advantages of having a little bit longer bow is your head can stay at a more natural position when you're at anchor because of the string angle. Like on, it's really not that bad on the 29, but like on the 27, the string angle was so much that you really got to bring your head in, which is fine, but it's always nice to keep your head as normal and relaxed as possible when anchoring. So a longer axle axle bow helps with that a lot. I don't know, I feel like, I feel like they hold very similar. Gosh, I'm surprised how fast it is still. Like we're only cutting off four feet per second between the two bows. pounds it's still quiet isn't it like wicked oh, quiet yeah nice stacking yeah i think those were slapping down there yeah decent group a little low so i guess that's a good size comparison right there Two fully set up. 33, obviously bigger, um, heavier, but still performance wise, four feet per second difference, like with them fully set up and not like in a lab, that ain't bad. So let's pull them and I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna kind of go back and forth and just see, or just tell you guys kind of what I'm feeling. Two fully set up bows with four axle axle inches different. This is the V3X. 29 and I will say I've been shooting this bow since July so if it doesn't feel like a new bow to me but I'm very familiar with it this bow I'm still kind of foreign to it's very uh, I mean I've taken probably 20 shots out of it now Hold on, was I? Okay, yeah, this is right. I'm guessing, I guess, on inside and changing Yeah, you changed the inside. Okay, let's leave on that one. Hmm. String angle is different. Like, obviously, that is the first thing just because of the sheer size of it. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit more feedback out of this one, naturally because it's a longer bow. Just a touch more feedback, like a little slow a little slow vibration but I feel like I feel like that one holds better if you guys have ever shot like a uh, TRX 38 that kind of has that similar feel where it's just kind of like boom it's like a log boom, shooting it this one's more like a little rocket That's like, no, I feel nothing in that. I don't know, that feels good too. Shoot 
this again. I'm gonna pay attention to kind of after the shot. Yeah, this has such a target bow feel, it's nuts. The way it holds, the way it shoots, the way it feels after the shot, very target bow. If you've ever shot like a bigger target bow, TRX 36, 38, 40, um, it's very much like that, which is awesome. Like, if, you're, if you have a like 29 and a half, 30 inch draw, I mean, even me, 28 and a half, and I'm, it feels good. I mean, I definitely would feel comfortable hunting with this. Um, it is in the new granite color, which also is very sick. Um, I don't know. That's kind of. I feel like. <clears throat> I feel like this bow is an A plus winner with the 29 inches axle axle. It is the perfect bow, I say, for like 80% of people. But this 80% of people also would, I feel like, really like this bow. It's one of those things where you just have to go to a pro shop and you have to shoot them to figure out what one you want, right? I mean, like, yeah, I don't know. I think if I were to take one a total archer challenge, I would take this. If I were to take one hunting, I would take that because I feel like I might be able to shoot this one a little bit more accurately. The way it's longer axle axle, your head can be more relaxed and everything can be a little more target bow feeling. But this one is a little more tactical, smaller, fits me well, and it's still freaking pounds. So, I don't know. That is the, uh, the bow build on the, T on the TRX. Wow, I'm calling it the TRX. V3X 33 compared to the V3X 29. Two awesome bows. A lot of new technology in these guys. Make sure you check them out. Local Matthews, authorized retailer. Shooting for yourself, find out for yourself. And we'll catch you in the next one. Dope.